Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, November 11th, 2022. As always, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and share this video with others. Uh, the more people like this video, the more they share it, the more comments you make, uh, the higher it is going to be in the rankings and the more people will benefit from this knowledge. So again, hit the like button. Uh, pretty normal kind of video but more details uh, we're looking at sort of a split market so as Dow Jones is actually approaching bullish levels and I'll explain what I mean um, you can also think about as new uptrend uh, at the same time S&P 500 is somewhere in the middle it's at resistance it's very important resistance I'll show you why um, Nasdaq and small caps are still lagging and uh, are in the middle of what's called an oversold bounce. So taken all together, this is quite a treacherous time in the stock market. Um, and we don't really, you know, some people want to go long to buy, some want to go short, to sell short. Um, and things are not very clear, honestly. Uh, junk debt for now is confirming uh, the move higher for stocks by also moving higher. Dollar broke multiple support levels, uh, but currently is oversold uh, and it is still in an uptrend, so it could rally easily. Dollar uh, gold took advantage of this dollar weakness, and um, it's it bounced. It is it did also uh, bounce quite a bit uh, over the past couple of weeks and is now approaching resistance. <coughs> And Bitcoin dropped to a new 52-week lows um, and could collapse even further. If you're a subscriber, then stay tuned. We have quite a bit of various stocks and securities to cover um, uh, for the elite and uh, speculator newsletters. So, uh, for example, we're going to cover crude oil, natural gas, transportation, um, American Express, IBM, AT&T. Lots of airline stocks uh, also on the agenda. If you're not yet a subscriber, consider signing up by going to the link in the description. All right, let's get started. S&P 500. It's a little bit busy chart. Let me go through it. So on this chart, number one, it's a candlestick chart. So notice we have this green and red uh, sticks they look like candlesticks if you are um, I don't know scared of them you can change it to line their line chart um, however candlesticks do give a better representation if you know how to read them uh, I will briefly explain how to read candlesticks you go left to right so for example today I'm going to show you very briefly how to read today's candlestick so this is today November 11th you go from top to bottom, um, you know, um, or rather we go from left to right. If the candle is green, so we started at the bottom here. Currently we're in the green, so uh, sometime during the day notice this tail or shadow out of the bottom. We dropped sometime during the day. Um, we also went a little bit above the current level and we're about to close. Um, you can see on the right here we're closing so left to right uh, and we're about to close above the entry uh, above the open so it's a green candlestick vice versa if it's a red candlestick for example this one from uh, October November 2nd we opened here uh, on the left I guess you can say uh, sometime during the day we went higher with a shadow at the top sometime during the day we went lower but we closed um, near the bottom because this red low uh, red candle okay so very briefly um, on this candle on this chart of candlesticks uh, we also see four lines so you can see green blue red and yellow lines these are my indicators I use them for trading now um, when the stock is above the blue support resistance line this is S&P 500 so it's a stock for example here back in uh, uh, January of this year was still above it, so we were buying on any pullback towards this blue support resistance line. Um, sometime in the future, 
uh, we closed below the yellow line so for example it happened right there on april 29th so at this point i said okay we're no longer in an uptrend we're now in a downtrend so we need to reverse our thinking we need to sell sell at the red line okay so sell at the red line also you can open short positions short signals at the red line uh, when we're in the downtrend this happened several times we had several beautiful opportunities to sell short until very recently we had a what's called a hammer candlestick where i'm hover where i'm hovering on thursday 13th of october why is it a hammer candlestick because it looks like a hammer it has this shadow at the bottom which looks like a handle and we have this um, uh, green body uh, which looks like a hammerhead okay so since then we've been kind of rising um, we broke above this yellow sport resistance line um, we retested it quite successfully so on october i'm sorry november 3rd and november 4th right there where i'm hovering the price came down towards the yellow line we touched it several times twice and then we rallied off of it in fact on uh, yesterday on thursday november 10th we had a huge rally in all um, indices and many uh, of the stocks so since we are still technically speaking in a downtrend we have not yet closed above this bullish levels where i'm hovering the blue line currently at 4318 4318 is the magic number currently for s p 500 if or when we get above that level we will say that this bear market that i just showed you that started uh, this year in april is over and now we're in a new bull market we're going to thinking about uh, stocks are going to continue higher and we'll be buying and at this point once we close above this blue line at 4318 most likely we'll start making new new highs new highs new highs it hasn't happened yet in fact we're currently right now uh, retesting this red support resistance line uh, at 3991 it is a, a very important level because this is what's called a strong resistance so strong resistance um, this this is where we sold last time two times here's an august 26 and then another time here on 13th of september notice nice selling signals short signals will we get something like this now we have a setup currently in other words we have a high above the red line well in this case most likely it's going to be a close above the red line it doesn't matter as long as we made a, at least a high above the red line because sometimes we have what's called a uh, a, a shooting star candlestick where um, there's a high above the red line and then immediately the same day we, we close like for example where i'm hovering this candlestick on first of november that's a, a a a tiny little shooting star candlestick we have a shadow of the top and then a red body and it closed below the open so we could have had something like this today uh, unlikely because we only have you know four minutes left in the trading but anything is possible so right now we have a setup um, we have um, we have a security which is still in a downtrend because we, this is a 52 week low i mean you cannot dispute a downtrend when we're hitting 52 week low so on november october 13th we hit the 52 week low um it bounced so right now i'm still thinking that this is an oversold bounce so we're bouncing within a bigger downtrend so now we have a setup um, we have a uh, close or a high above this red support resistance line now what we need is we need a trigger so a signal a signal it would look like this when you will see a, a close below the uh, red line like we had on uh, august 26. so we'll see if because this is a very similar setup what we're seeing so we we're seeing a close above this red line and possible and then we continued quite a bit higher and then finally rolled over uh in uh from uh, in july into august will it happen something like this possibly now the alternative scenario is what's happening to the dow jones so dow jones this is dow jones industrial average it's it's composed of 30 stocks and they're uh, weighted according to uh, price uh, and this is a 
you know, it's a kind of old-fashioned uh, index. Uh, there is a weird methodology, and it's not by capitalization. Uh, so you can read about it. Um, however, it is also important um, benchmark, and people do watch it. Uh, so uh, Dow Jones uh, also is in a downtrend. We also, we're selling it short. Bear market started here also in April. Uh, selling opportunities, short signals. Notice right there on Tuesday, 16th of August, we came super close to the new bull market, but we rolled over. Uh, this is actually just perfect example of resistance. Uh, we came up to this blue support resistance line, failed there, and then collapsed. Um, now, this time it looks like it's different because today it is most likely going to close above this blue support resistance line, just barely, but I think it will close above it. This would imply a new bull market, new uptrend for Dow Jones. Okay, so this is a, this is a really truly momentous occasion. Um, this hasn't happened since uh, April of this year. Um, now, because of the methodology of the construction of uh, the index, Dow, Dow Jones uh, index, I am not giving it as much credence as a as I give a credence as I give to S and P 500. I trust pretty much exclusively S and P 500. Um, if S and P 500, like I just showed you, continues higher and give gets above 4318, 4318, where I'm hovering then that's it um bear market is over uh dow jones is nice it's it's a nice indicator it's very promising uh so bulls uh stock bulls or people who think that stocks will continue higher should rejoice at this uh, event uh, but it's not the uh, most important one in my mind and just based on experience i would rather see s and p uh, do this the same thing uh, it hasn't happened once again so let's let's wait and see what happens same goes for nasdaq you know nasdaq is lagging badly um notice that dow jones is already above the blue line um, uh, s p is retesting the red line nasdaq is barely above the yellow support resistance line now yeah and i mean it's oversold uh, it was oversold here, now it's bouncing, so let's see how high this bounce will carry it, basically. Um, not much I can say really about NASDAQ, uh, it, it's, that, it's doing pretty much the same thing as uh, S&P, etc., so let's watch for uh, a breakout f above the blue line for S&P, and if it does, we, just, we should just buy uh, pretty much everything. And same goes for uh, Russell 2000, small caps index. Now, this one I want to give a little bit more context. So this one, um, notice the way the indicators are kind of curving down here. Okay, so what we could do is we can turn on the offset into the future. And notice that what's happening is that the indicators will uh, continue coming down towards price action. So that means bullish price levels are going to be getting closer to the price action. So this is also a good news uh, for the um, uh, general stock market because if uh, Russell 2000 enters a bull market together with Dow Jones, that would add evidence to the uh, possibility of this uh, bear market being over. So let's let's see again what happens, especially with S&P. High yield bonds, junk debt, also uh, have confirmed so far the move higher for stocks. Notice that we bottomed here for junk debt uh, on Thursday, uh, October 13th, and uh, we're still moving higher. So um, as far as junk debt, we can look at the weekly chart. Um, and yes, it, it moved higher uh, also this week for the week. So overall this is a good news because so junk debt and stocks not use this correlation coefficient here down below mostly it's positive uh, overall uh, over many years um, if, if high yield bonds or junk debt um, is in a uh, uptrend then s p 500 will also be in an uptrend uh, that's that's the core premise of this correlation uh, study of correlations Correlation does not mean causation. We don't know if um, high yield bonds are the cause of stocks rallying or vice versa, or 
none of the above maybe there is a, another reason and i'm sure you can make a comment and uh, tell me uh, what you think so please do dollar index dxy so currently um, back here if you listen to my previous videos so first of all dollar index has been in an uptrend i called this back um, in the 2021 july as early as july 2021 basically buying opportunities for the dollar index notice all i need to know is a close above this um, blue support resistance line um, interestingly enough um, dollar bottomed out uh, on the day of the insurrection on uh, january 6 2021 and now it seems to be topping out as the uh, answer wednesday 28th of september i don't know what happened on that date can anybody look it up and see if there's any reason now that we can say okay looks like we're tapping out here and this was the day um so let's see what happens but the important thing here is uh, there were there were multiple signs that there is a good chance we're rolling over um, we can do a little bit of candlestick analysis so uh, this candlestick where I'm hovering on 13th of October and then another candlestick right there on 21st of October um, they are bearish candlesticks because uh, you can see that there is a shadow at the top that means the, the prices came up during the day <clears throat> but then they came down uh, as the as the session progressed additionally it's a red candle it means the open is above the close so it means that it, it was a losing day so combine these two facts together we have a shadow at the top a red candlestick these are you can consider them a shooting star candlesticks so i was thinking okay something is already brewing under the um, surface then um, we had we made actually a lower low here uh, in october 26 or 27 rallied and i was like oh my god are we gonna make a new high we're we gonna make a new high no on this day right there friday 4th of november last friday with a big red candlestick and then more selling strong selling uh, we came down towards this i marked this by the uh, purple line uh, the lower the levels from um, october 26 and 27 broke them just collapsed through them um, yesterday and thursday as stocks were rallying so um, this is a um, there are some indications that the dollar in general could be just topping out uh, let's look at it in the weekly chart and you know this this week's candle just doesn't doesn't inspire uh, confidence it's a huge red candlestick big red candlestick you know uh, how bearish can you get that that's a bearish candlestick however having said that since we're still technically in an uptrend now how do i know because we haven't yet closed below this red support resistance line for forex and on, this is forex on commodities and uh, cryptocurrencies i use this uh, blue and red lines so they're quicker uh, for stocks we use this yellow line to determine the bear market so we're now below this uh, bullish levels meaning that we are oversold yet we're still in an uptrend the reason being again is because we haven't yet closed below this red line that means we have we're not yet in a downtrend having said that that means that we're gonna most likely try to bounce and we're gonna see what happens so this is again another important uh, indication to see have we actually topped out or not if we get something like okay we got a nice we got a, we got a signal um, we got a close above this blue line um, and then maybe we make a little bit of a move higher and then another collapse another strong selling and then we get to the red line at 10218 we close below it okay that's it game over uh, dollar is in a downtrend at that point then we need to start thinking about reversing our thinking and selling short okay so as of right now dollar is still in an uptrend but it's just been under pressure gold by extension has taken advantage of that notice that um, i pointed out this but then i'm going to look at the weekly chart first for gold xau usd so this 
three candlesticks. This is a weekly candlestick, a whole week's worth of activity. Right there, week of uh, 26th of September, week of 17th of October, week of um, 31st of October. Notice that three times we tried to get below this uh, about one, about 1615 levels. We failed, and then I'm like, okay, this is this is just looking looking like a bottom. And this week it, it surged strongly. I mean, big big red can. I bid the big. Uh, green candlestick, right? Uh, versus a uh, big red candlestick for the dollar. So w w why 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 is this happening? It's because dollar uh, and gold have the opposite relationship. Mostly because gold is traded in dollar. Notice this XU. There's this slash. This means divided by US dollar. Okay. So if this uh, US dollar is now getting smaller. This, this lower part of the equation is getting smaller. The gold will continue higher, and this is exactly what's happening. So, currently, gold is approaching strong resistance at 1785. There it is, red line. Let's see what happens there. Before, we had an opportunity to sell it short around that area, and it was quite successful. Did we reverse into a new bull market for gold? and by extension a new bear market for dollar. Soon we will find out. I would say that within a week. So let's let's wait. Bitcoin on the other hand um, had a great another yet another great fall. Um, now if you shorted Bitcoin back here in April of this year and are still short then I mean, it's technically you still should be short because the stop is at the red line, and the stop has never been triggered, and now we made a new low. Okay, so Bitcoin clearly is in a downtrend. Um, this candlestick right there, uh, Tuesday, 8th of November, clearly uh, was pretty bad, and the next day we had more selling. So right now, of course, we're gonna get some back and forth, but overall direction is down. I think we could easily get to one hundred uh, ten thousand um, dollars for Bitcoin. Uh, let's look on the weekly chart. I mean, it's since there are futures for Bitcoin, I don't think it will go to zero. But actually, it could. See, there's like this negative prices. I mean, imagine uh, some sort of a scenario where I don't know government outlaws Bitcoin and everybody wants to dump it and. You know, for example, you will be required to hold Bitcoin in some special wallet, uh, and it, it becomes actually expensive to do that and not worth your while. And so you want to unload it, and then everybody just unloads at the same time and collapses. And it has happened. Um, you know, oil did uh, go negative. I'm going to show you oil. Um, there is oil went negative not for long but it did go negative right there in the uh, beginning of the pandemic 2020 so um, futures are available for bitcoin and uh, why not right maybe they'll go negative um, so let me know what you think uh, again uh, don't forget to hit the like button uh, if you're ready to sign up, head over to mastercharttrading.com, click on sign up, uh, sign up for one of the products. I have two products, I have trading indicators and newsletters, and I have a, a package deal which is both indicators and newsletters. So trading indicators are these lines on the chart. You can trade pretty much anything under the sun with them, uh, as long as they're uh, open, high, low, and close. Uh, so pretty much uh, very easy to do and they're available for tradingview.com this interface where I'm hovering tradingview.com you can open a free tradingview account and then uh, once you open a free tradingview account sign up on my site and I will open the door for you and you will see the same indicators on your chart um, you also can sign up for my newsletter I send out daily alerts on various securities so for example this week uh, we're going to talk about all of these various stocks and securities 
and uh, I also send out a weekly uh, uh, video recap for members only so uh, sign up for that and of course the best deal is to get both indicators and newsletter at 59.95 per month it's a great deal all right again any questions make a comment send me a message uh, you can also contact me uh, on tradingview.com where i'm hovering is a chat button i am at master charts let me know if you have any questions thank you for watching and have another great trading week bye, -bye.